Welcome to part two of Effective Teaching. We're the Simple Teachers. I'm Angie. And I'm Winnie. Thanks for joining us, part two. From there, yeah, there then, still might be kids who don't get it yes. or have other holes that perhaps aren't addressed in your tier one. Yes, and so we have to talk about assessment for a minute. Yeah. So along with doing great tier one and tier two instruction, we also have assessments that are going on outside of our instruction. So mm -hmm. we have our formative and summative assessments within our instruction. Outside of that, we have a thing called a screener that everybody gets. Typically in most schools and school districts, we're doing oral reading fluency as a screener. Great example. Every student gets it. It is such a good window into how they're doing as an overall reader. So we may have some students that don't meet the screener. And so we know there's some holes, but we don't know what the holes are. Screeners are not meant to tell us what's wrong. They just tell us who. Yeah. So then we have to do some diagnostics of some sort. So our diagnostic in this case, we I like to use the drill down. So we drill down from fluency and we look into phonics just to double check, make sure, is there a phonics issue going on? Because if there is, we want to fix that first. Yeah. So we give a phonics screener or survey of some sort and see if or what phonics problems might be happening. Yeah. Then if we find some, we can do an intervention on those. And you could consider that a tier three intervention if you dip back into the grade below you's content. Because you haven't taught that in tier one instruction. Yeah. So you're filling a hole from a prior grade or perhaps something you don't cover, but is still so critical. Yeah, and you want to fill that hole. Phonics is a really easy hole to fill, technically speaking. Well, in the components land, yeah, yeah. it fills, ra fills rather quickly. So um, you would go back and fill that, but you wouldn't want to consider that a tier two. You would consider that a tier three intervention. Phonics could be a tier two intervention. Absolutely. If you taught phonics in tier one, whatever sound spelling pattern or multisyllabic word reading, and they're still struggling, you intervene in a small group in tier two, connecting it to what you learned in tier one. Yeah. But what Angie was talking about would not be, that would be a tier three intervention. Yeah. So you may have students that in your uh, rotation time mm -hmm. that are receiving both a tier two and a tier three intervention from you. And yeah. they might look similar, they might look different. One could be, maybe it's a fluency that's a tier two, and I'm gonna hand that off to my, my aide because it's an easier intervention to make. And then a phonics that's a tier three, and that's a harder intervention yeah. to do, so I'm gonna hold on to that one. Depends. I love that thought. It's very different. It can be done in lots of different ways. You have to look at the needs of this child, who I have to help me, who's yeah. capable. Mm -hmm. I mean, we we do that type of consulting to help people figure those things out as well. So it takes a lot of thought and a lot of multiple brains even yeah. on the problem to figure it out sometimes. So using data helps guide those decisions. Absolutely. Yeah. So have good data to yeah. use. Data. Well, we haven't talked completely about tier three. Tier three should technically be just a few of your students. And it could be revolving around something that is a tier one issue that keeps coming back or something that is that far removed, yeah. way back issue that we have to go back and plug. Mm -hmm. And remember, all three of those are a classroom model and responsibility, they really should be in the hands of the classroom teacher. Yeah. So think about how if you do have pull out intervention type things or even push in, doesn't matter. Yeah. But if you have aides teaching for you, what piece of RTI are they filling? Mm -hmm. Answer that question and see, ooh, am I providing tier one? Am I providing tier two, mm -hmm. tier three, if needed? How are tier one and tier two being provided? 
Yeah, are they aligned? Are we giving those students the best first shot yeah. possible? That tier one is so critical. It's it's really the most critical piece. Absolutely. You can fix a lot in tier one, but you can't fix as much in interventions tier two and tier three. You just, you, you run out of time and resources. I call that flipping the triangle. You will have more kids at the top that are in that top red needing tier three if you if you try to do that. What a great reminder and sad visual. <laughs> it is a sad visual. I know. So let's avoid that. Yeah, let's not do that one. All right. So I think that besides after you've taught all of those wonderful things, you even pulled experts in from your building to help you make decisions, or maybe you've reached out to us at some point to help you. Um, you've got things running smoothly. Your progress monitoring is the thing that will let you know, how are we doing? Are our kids in the different interventions making the progress they need mm -hmm. to get where their goals would say they should make it to? So that trajectory line. Are they on that trajectory line? So you really need to make sure that your progress monitoring is in place as well. Yes. And I prefer a nice overall reading progress monitor, again, like oral reading fluency. Kindergarten is an exception. <laughs> so once you pass the middle of first grade, oral reading fluency is your best progress monitor for almost every single intervention being done because you're going to see the work you're doing in any of the interventions over there in the oral reading fluency. Yeah. Are they growing enough, quick enough, to make the expected or realistic growth needed? Mm -hmm. Are they going to catch the bus? Are they staying on the bus? <laughs> Are they growing, right? Oh, yeah. So it's such a good way to measure progress. Yep, and it keeps the teacher accountable if they're not making the progress needed what change do i need to make in the interventions being given yeah if i'm not getting 80 percent, 80 percent in tier one what changes do i need to make in my tier one instruction mm -hmm. so this is really an, a good accountability measure for us and i i like this part of it it's on me absolutely so RTI, it's a great one. We want three years growth. Well, some kids need it. Yeah, so we can be effective teachers. Just implement RTI the best you can and you've got it. Yeah. Okay. Follow us on Instagram and Facebook. Thanks for watching this video. Make sure you're subscribed to us on YouTube. Simply teach.